Hi, this is Jeff Heen. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to see how we can actually train a hugging face neural network, fine tune it further from the pre-trained weights that it has using a data set on hugging face as well as a pre-trained model on hugging face. So now we're gonna actually train a model in Hugging Face. I'm going to go ahead and open this in Colab Pro. You don't really need Colab Pro, I'm using Colab Pro Plus. It works just fine in the free environment. You do wanna make sure that you're using a GPU for the hardware accelerator, that'll help it to go faster. And I'm gonna go ahead and begin and show you the different parts as we run this. I'm gonna run this, we're gonna use TensorFlow 2.x. And that's, that is ready. We're going to go ahead and install Hugging Face. It's not included in Colab by default. This goes pretty quick, but I'll still fast forward through it. And I'm going to load the emotion data set. We've dealt with this one before. It is tweets and they've been labeled to six different emotion types. You can see what an individual tweet looks like and you can see the label is three. To see the actual features that are labels, really, I, I would prefer to call these labels than features, but these are the, the different emotion types. Now, considering this is Twitter, I am surprised that trolling and political fervor are not among them. I don't even, maybe both of those are special cases of anger, but... So now we'll go ahead and load the auto tokenizer, which we're going to use the distillvert base. And this is going to break the tweets into subword tokens. We'll see that in a moment. It takes it a moment to, uh, it's already loaded, so that is good. So now that we have all of this, the, the tokenizer loaded, the data loaded, we need to transform this into TensorFlow type data so that it can be used to train the TensorFlow neural network that we loaded. Now, Hugging Face does allow you to pull those neural networks down in PyTorch as well as TensorFlow, Keras. So you can, you can use it with whichever one works the best. I'm using the data col collator, which is going to be used to take the Python dictionaries and the, the hugging face format that they put the data in, and it's going to output it as TensorFlow. We'll go ahead and run that. This does not take long, so I don't need to fast forward it. Then we're going to take and we're gonna get the training data set and the evaluation data set, run those, using the, the, the tokenized form of it that we, that we previously created. That was done up here. I kind of jumped through that fairly quickly because we, we've done this before in previous class modules, but we, we basically took all of the data, broke into the subwords with the beginning and ending tokens and put it, put it all together. So now we can break that into the training and the evaluation sets. As is typical for hugging face data sets, they're already pre-broken into train and evaluation for you. Now I'm gonna build the two TensorFlow data sets and I'm passing in the columns that we're extracting. So we're getting the attention masks. That's telling which of the parts of the sequence are not padding and need to be paid attention to. The input IDs, which tells us the, the tokens that each of the, the subwords were broken into, and then the labels that it's going to align to. Batch size is eight, so we have a full supervised training set there. Now we're ready to download the, we're using Distillabert again, and this is using the, the model for sequence classification. So we're gonna classify those six labels. Now we can compile and fit the neural network. Now it's going to go through these epochs for a while and you're going to see the log loss 
the loss function slowly decrease as it goes through all of these. You certainly want to make sure you have your GPU enabled so that these don't take completely forever. You can see the sparse categorical accuracy is increasing. By the way, what categoric, what sparse accuracy means is we're not putting them into one hot encoding where the, the six emotions would each have separate columns with a one and just one and zeros in the other. Rather, we're actually passing in the index. So one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, whatever the, the actual label indices were. So this is going to continue. I set it to train for five epochs and that gets it to a reasonably decent accuracy level. So this is something you can do to fine tune and train for your own neural networks. You can then borrow the, the BERT models that were already created and trained for, from Google. So you're, you're basically just taking, Google or other companies really, but you're just taking those pre-trained weights and then adapting those transfer learning style to whatever it is you're trying to actually train for. Thank you for watching this video. And if you'd like to keep up with this course, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can see all my latest videos on artificial intelligence and natural language processing.